Good afternoon, I'm Raylene Ramsey. This is your afternoon news fix for Monday, the 14th of October. Corrections and Health New Zealand are exempt from prosecution around not giving medical help to an inmate on a hunger strike. Francis Marifashore has refused all medical intervention, even for a heart attack or stroke. Azaria Howe reports. The politically motivated action has lasted more than 100 days. The two agencies were concerned about consequences for them. The Herald's Open Justice reports the High Court has found Shaw has the right to make his own medical decisions and was of sound mind when he made them. The government's facial recognition technologies show no signs of racial bias. Testing's confirmed a trial of the identity check software by the Ministry of Social Development and Hospitality New Zealand has turned up no evidence of significant bias. Thomas Rice reports. A Department of Internal Affairs spokesperson says identity check has produced a 94% success rate. They say they're confident it works effectively for everyone. They say the technology so far proved to be secure, safe and compliant with data protection requirements. The Taxpayers' Union wants more in-depth probing of Kainga Ora. In a review in May, former Prime Minister Sir Bill English stated the State Housing Agency wasn't financially viable. It's now been revealed apartments in a complex in Auckland's Meadow Bank cost $1.2 million each. Union spokesman Sam Warren says English's review was helpful, but it needs more investigation. A select committee review with the powers to compel witnesses, that would get to the bottom of whatever is broken. A man with heart attack symptoms died as his wife drove him to hospital with no ambulance dispatched almost an hour after she called 111. Deputy Health and Disability Commissioner Deborah James says the call was prioritised as serious, but not immediately life-threatening. Danica McLean has more. A tool to identify available ambulances launched about 30 minutes later recommended Fens respond, but a dispatcher deemed it unnecessary. The wife called again, saying her husband was worse, but the case wasn't re-triaged. James recommended an apology and more training, and St John says it has made changes. The government's decision to seek feedback on boosting diesel reserves has been gladly received. The last government introduced a minimum stockholding obligation of 21 days for diesel. Resource Minister Shane Jones wants this increased by a week to 28 days. Transporting New Zealand Interim Chief Executive Dom Kalassi says about 99% of freight trucks use diesel. Having that additional holding will be very useful. And look, and look it, it just increases resilience to supply chain, so that can only be a good thing. Cautious optimism about a new government forestry industry working group. It's in response to concerns about costs for emissions imposed on forestry by the last government. Forest Owners Association CEO Elizabeth Haig says they're hoping their input will have an effect. In sport, an unsavoury incident has soured celebrations for Bathurst champion Brody Kostecki. The winner of the great race has told the Sunrise programme a member of his crew at Erebus Motorsport was attacked and hospitalised. Centre Ali Leitawa has signed a two-year NRL contract extension with the New Zealand Warriors through to the end of 2027. And Ryan Fox has finished the PGA Tour's Black Desert Championship in a tie for 46th, 14 strokes behind winner Matt McCarty. I'm Raylene Ramsey. That is your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update tomorrow morning from the News Talk ZB newsroom.